Hallelujah. I brought my beat up Bible today. <laughs> brought my old Bible. It's, it's, it's held together with black electrical tape. This is old, but it's got good new stuff in it too. Amen. Amen. And today I've got some things in here I want to share with you. I believe God wants to open your heart today and touch you in a way that you might not have been touched before. This is the year 2018. Can I take my jacket off? Sure. All right. This is the year 2018, and I got a little revelation on this year that I want to share with you, give you some inspiration, something to hurt, to, to lift you up today. Hallelujah. There's a, there's a law in, in the Bible, in, in theology and interpretation of the scripture. It's called the law of first mention. Anybody ever hear of the law of first mention before? Yeah. Okay. It's a simple law. It means the first time something is mentioned in the Bible sets the tone for what it means. So I looked up the word and the number 18. And I thank God for Mr. Strong. He's been dead for many, many years, but if it wasn't for Mr. Strong, we wouldn't know where to find things in the Bible sometimes. Amen? Amen. Strong's Concordance. Hallelujah. So I looked in Strong's Concordance, and I looked for the number 18, and I found the first time the number 18 is mentioned. And the first time the number 18 is mentioned is the time that it sets the tone for the number 18. We're in a new century. We're in a new millennium. And this is a new year. It's never been here before. We'll never come back again. We need wisdom and revelation on how to move and how to act in this year. And I believe this being the year 2018, we need to understand the number 18. Mm -hmm. We have to see what God is saying to us. The first mention of 18 is in Judges chapter 3 verse 14. And this is what it says. The children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel. You know, sometimes God allows your enemies to get stronger because you're not serving him. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why so many problems happen in so many places. Because people who used to serve God stop serving God. The next thing you know, the enemy is strengthened. He has a right. He's strengthened against them. The Lord allows it to happen. Mm -hmm. But there's a way out of that. Amen. Who says that it, the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek. That's Eglon. Eglon got his cousins. His cousins, the Ammonites. The Moabites and Ammonites were cousins. He got his cousins and his friends, and they went and they smote Israel. And they possessed the city of palm trees. And the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, for 18 years. 18 years they were slaves. 18 years they served an ungodly man who wouldn't allow them to worship, who wouldn't allow them to do things they wanted to do, who stole from them, who took from them, who kept them in bondage. The number 18 signifies bondage in the Bible. 2018 will be a year of bondage unless we can get to the mercy that Sean was talking about before. The mercy that Sean was talking about before. The mercy of God. The second time the number 18 is mentioned is in 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 15. 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 15. And this is what it says there. About Solomon making the temple of God. It says, and he cast two pillars of brass 18 cubits high each. And he named one Boaz, and he named the other Jacob. Now that's the second time 18 is mentioned. And brass speaks of judgment, but God says, my mercy is greater than my judgment. Mm. Judgment brought them into bondage. Thank you, Lord. Judgment of their sins, judgment of them doing evil in the sight of the Lord, brought them into bondage. But mercy exceeds judgment, God said. And, and, and Solomon creates these two pillars. Two is the number of witness. God said, let everything be established by how many? Sweet. At least two witnesses. And these witnesses are Boaz and Jacob. Mm. And Boaz means our strength is in him. And Jacob means he establishes. So this is what he's saying. He's saying God 
establishes our strength in himself. In him. What does Paul say? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. And how do we do that? We put on the whole armor of God. Come on, give God a hand clap. Put on the whole armor of God like I was telling you a moment ago. Strength is established in him. We know we need to be strong. We know we need to be strong in the Lord. When I saw that, what it did was it brought me to a message I preached 30 years ago. I studied something out 30 years ago at least. And I studied this thing out and I wrote an article and had it published on this. It was all about praise. All about praise. And when God sent me to New Jersey 38 years ago from New York, he spoke to me and said to me, you're going to bring praise everywhere you go. You're going to bring praise into New Jersey. Amen. And we started our church, Living Water Church in North Arlington, and we were a church that praised God and we still yes. are. Yes. And praise is what keeps us strong. Amen. Amen. That's why you need to praise God. When you're singing like you're singing, you haven't got all the instruments, you haven't got all those things, but you have your voice. Amen. You've got your hands. Amen. You've got Hallelujah. your feet. Yeah. The Bible says praise God on the ten stringed instruments. Mm. That's the ten <laughs> strings of your fingers. Yes. Amen. You praise Him with those. The, Lord, the Bible says praise God by clapping your hands. Praise God. Give a shout to God. Amen. Amen. So we praise God. We shout to God. We clap our hands. We stomp our feet. And we glorify God. We dance in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. And then we praise God. And when we praise God, something happens. And Sean referred to it before. Look at Psalms chapter 8 and verse 2. And I'm going to read it from the, from the English Standard Version because I like the way it says it here. Out of the mouths of babies and infants, you have established strength Amen. because of your enemies to, to, to quiet and still the enemy Amen. and the avenger. God says, out of your mouths, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, out of the mouths of babes and infants, he has what? Okay. Established Amen. praise. Spiritually, he has Boaz and Jacob. Amen. My strength is established in him. I'm praising him. This is what Jesus says. Now, Jesus, I love that the Bible interprets the Bible. Mm -hmm. Because when people interpret the Bible, they start making mistakes. But in Matthew chapter 21, starting in verse 12, this is what it says here. And Jesus went into the temple of God, and he cast out all those that sold and bought in the temple. God wants the house of God clean. He wants a clean house. Mm. He wants a house of praise, a house of mercy, a house of prayer. He wants a house of worship, a house of love. And he can't have that when there's all this money changing stuff and all this political stuff in the Amen. church. Church as usual, church as usual, same old thing all the time. He's sick and tired of it. And I'm telling you, Jesus is here right now to Amen. cleanse the churches in New Jersey, to Amen. cleanse the churches in America and around the world. On, and he's going to cleanse these things. He's going to do a clean sweep of all this stuff that's going on. We're going to see ministries keep falling. You know, wow. big ministries have been falling for the oh. past 15, 20 years. Big, giant ministries starting to fall one after the other. Why? Because they've got corruption inside Come of them. On. Because they're more interested in making money, they're more interested in making merchandise of God's people mm. than they are of truly preaching the Word of God. They're more interested in being on TV mm. than they are in being in the, in the heart of God. They're more interested in getting their name written somewhere in a magazine or a book and being recognized than they are in having people's names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. My God. And God is sick of it. The world's getting worse. I hate to say it. You know, we pray for peace, we pray for love, we pray for things to happen, but you got to understand something. The world's not going to get better and better and better. The Bible tells us that in the last days, things are going to get worse. And we're in the last days. We've been in the last days for 2,000 years. Ever since Pentecost, we entered the last days. The Bible says, Peter says, in the last days I will pour out my spirit. And that is what you see and hear right now on Pentecost Sunday. So we're in the last days and we're in the last moments of the last days. And I believe that God has given mercy to America Amen. by giving us a man that people didn't want many of them, that people still don't want many of them. But I believe Donald Trump is the man that God put in office so that he starts to drain the swamp, that he starts to break up the political garbage. I'm not saying that Donald Trump is the is a Christian and the best man of God and all these. I'm not saying that. He, he's just a businessman. But God, I believe, put him in that office so he can start to do things to straighten out things and bring mercy to America. So we don't enter into more judgment. 
The corruption that is in our government is has never reached the level that it's at today. The corruption that's been in this government for years, the things that have been done that have sold America down the river are horrible. And I believe God's answered prayer. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land. And I believe God's bringing some healing to America today. Now we need healing among different groups of people. Mm. I don't believe in races. There are, there's only one race, the human race. Amen. Black and white and Asian and Hispanic, these races, this is a lie from the devil. It's Come to on. divide Come and on. to make people feel superior to others and make people feel inferior to Amen. others. That's its purpose. It was not even something that's in the Bible. That's the right. Bible says God created the nations. Out of one blood, he created different nations. Mm -hmm. But society has taken this one blood in many nations and turned it into races that are against each other. Wow. If you search it out, you'll find in the 1700s and the 1800s is when this whole race stuff began. Mm. And it was done for a reason. It was done in America in particular to keep black people down. Wow. Because they said black people are inferior. Right. They're only half a human. Yes. Mm. They're an inferior race. And then they said that about the Chinese, mm -hmm. the Asians. Then they said that about the Latinos, the Hispanics. They said they're not a full race. White supremacy was what was going on in Europe and in America in the 18th century. Mm -hmm. But thank God, God raised up people like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Who began to fight a fight because he said, I have a dream. He didn't say, I have a plan. I have a dream. And that dream is taking place. And we need to pray for healing among the nations. You see, we're a nation of nations. Jersey City is a city of nations. You don't even need to go out of Jersey City to preach to probably 70 different nations. They're all here living in Jersey City. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can be an evangelist, a missionary evangelist, right in your own home. Wow. In your own hometown. Amen? So I believe God is giving us mercy. And that's what he did here. He cleansed, he judged, he cleansed, but then he speaks of mercy. And this is what it says. Let's go back into, uh, into the gospel here, into Matthew 21. He overthrew and he, and he cast out all those that sold and bought in the temple, overthrowing the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Selling doves. What do you think that means? Tell me something. Somebody tell me. What do you think it means, selling doves? Mm. Selling the spirit. Mm. They're trying to sell God. Remember when in the New Testament, the book of Acts, when Simon the magician goes to Peter and says, here's money, give me the power to lay my hands on people and give them the Holy Ghost. He wanted to buy doves and sell doves. Spiritually, that's what's going on. In other words, they held people in bondage and tell them, we're the ones you have to follow. You can't go here. You can't go there. You've got to stay right here. Have you ever heard that in a church? I've heard it in churches before where the pastor says, if you leave this church, God's going to judge you. And you better not leave this church. I want to tell you something. You better run from that church. Come on. Come on. And they were selling doves and he threw them out. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. God wants to start to bring healing and deliverance to the church again. He wants to see the great revivals of healing take place. He wants to see what we saw in the 1940s and the 1950s where there were camps as crusades. Thousands of people, I mean thousands, 10, 20, 30, 50,000 coming together and miracles and healings taking place. And I'm not talking about people falling down and laughing and getting drunk and somebody hitting you with their coat and things like that. I'm not talking about that because you don't see many miracles in those things. They saw miracles take place. Miracles take place. Blind eyes opening, not just one or two, not a little thing. True miracles happening. R.W. Shambach, A.A. Allen, many others ministering to God. God wants to bring it back again. Once the house is clean, he wants to bring in signs and wonders. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. No, I mean say amen. I, let's say somebody shout amen. amen. Oh, that's not a shout. Everybody shout amen. 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 That's it. Come on, come on. You got to help me now. You see, when you, are, when you are, are showing me you're hungry, it pulls the word of God out of me. Amen. It pulls the anointing out of me. It's not so that it's me preaching. It's the Spirit responding to your hunger and your thirst. Amen. 
Somebody tell God, I want more, God. God, I want, I want more, more God. right now. I want more right now. And so he says, he came, they came to him and he healed them. Now, when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were very angry. And they said to him, don't you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes, have you never read? And then he quoted Psalm 8, verse 2, which I just read to you. Out of the mouths of babies and infants, you have established strength. Now, Jesus interprets the Bible. Yes. Mm -hmm. He takes what David said in Hebrew, and he speaks it in Aramaic, the language of the people. And we're, it's written to us in the common language of Greek in the New Testament, which was the language of the people. So he said, I'm going to tell you what, what, what David meant when he wrote this down about establishing strength. He says, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. Boaz and Jacob. He cleansed the temple so the two pillars could stand strong again before the house of God. Boaz, our strength is in him. Jacob, he establishes. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, thou hast established strength through perfect praise is what the Bible is teaching us. Amen. Amen. Perfect praise. What's perfect praise? Mm. What's perfect praise? <laughs> I mean, is there a test on praise? Do you get a, do you get a, a 100? Do you get a 50, a 90? Do you get a 75? What, what is perfect praise? Perfect score. We know perfect score in school. Ask Khadija. She knows what all, all about perfect scores in school. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> perfect score is 100, right? You want to give God 100% of your praise. That's perfect praise. 100% of praise is when you're laying down in bed and you're feeling sick and you've just had something happen to you and you can hardly lift your eyes up and you just roll your head towards heaven and you say, thank you, Jesus. That's perfect praise. Mm. Yes. Yes. Amen. But that won't work when you're feeling good and you're in church. When you're in church and you're feeling good, you can't just say, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. You got to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I get strong in the Lord. I need strength today. I can't just walk around with a little mousy voice. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. It's a little better. Amen? Amen. It's a little better now. You see, you're going to get strength established inside of you when you give him perfect yes. praise. Yes. Perfect praise when you're not well is thank you, Lord. Perfect praise when your bills aren't paid and you haven't got a dollar and you're wondering what to do. Perfect praise is thank you, Jesus. I know you'll make a way where there is no way. Somebody say amen. Amen. Perfect praise is when your child comes home sick from school and you see they're getting hot in their head and they've got something in their throat and their stomach's not feeling well. Perfect praise is you lay hands on them and you're saying, in Jesus' name, I drive this sickness out. And perfect praise says, thank you, Jesus, for doing your will, doing your work, and healing my child. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. That's perfect praise. I guarantee you, Mom, you didn't say, oh, thank you, Jesus. I didn't do that. You might have danced a little bit. Might have walked out of the room and said, oh, thank you, Jesus. I can't wait till tomorrow and see how she gets up in the morning. Amen. Because sorrow may be there in the night, but joy will come in the morning. Amen. Come on, give God some perfect praise today. If you're sick, I'll let you get away with a thank you, Jesus. But if you're not sick, I want you to stand up and clap your hands and lift your voice and say, thank you, Lord. I praise you today. I glorify you today. Make me strong in the Lord, Jesus. Make me strong in the Lord. Establish my strength today. Hallelujah. You see, the second time we see 18 mentioned is the time of praise and strength and establishment in God. His mercy overrides his justice Amen. and his judgment. Amen. And that's where we want the church to be in 2018. Amen. You can be seated. Praise God. We want the church to be in the place of mercy. In 2018. We want the church to be in the place of praise. In 2018. We want the church to be established in strength. In 2018. And we only get established in strength. When we give him praise. Because the Bible says. The joy of the Lord. Is our strength. Oh hallelujah. You're still too quiet for me. You're still too quiet for me. Come on. Give a little bit of worship. Give a little bit of praise. When, when, I'm, when I'm saying these things. You know what you're doing when you do that? You're stirring yourself up. You're encouraging yourself. 
Come on, mother. It's when you're cooking something. You make farina. You make some oatmeal. You make some stew. You make something. You got to stir it. If you don't stir it, it gets burned on the bottom. Yes. You burned something in your house, haven't you? I know I have. When I was young learning how to cook, I burned a lot of stuff. It stinks, and the pot is hard to clean. Yes. <laughs> Stir up your praise. Amen. Don't let it get stinky. Amen. Don't let it get burned. Because it's too hard to get back out of that. Yes. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The scripture puts the context of what we're saying today. Now listen to me. If Jesus is going to bring to us deliverance, if he's going to bring to us the mercy we need, if we're going to see healing, signs, wonders, the blind and the lame coming to the Lord and coming into the house of God and seeing healings take place, what would happen if you started to see people come in from the outside, one or two walk in one day and just say, I just came to visit. And then during the time of prayer, there's a word of knowledge comes and the healing miracle takes place and they go out and tell somebody else, you got to come back right where I went to. I just got healed. And then three come the next time, and then five come the next time. And after that, you got the door open because you're preaching and you're standing outside. Can it happen? Absolutely. Why not? But it's up to you to establish the praises of God and get the strength of the Lord and have the healing flow. It's up to you. We say, oh, God, send revival. He says, praise me. Oh, God, send healings. Praise me. Oh, God, won't you? Praise me. If you, then I. That's the deal. If you... Then I. If you will pray, I'll heal your land. If you will praise me and worship me, I'll make you strong. I'll bring healings. I'll bring miracles. I'll do signs and wonders. I'll change your life. Let's look at what happened here in the synagogue. In one of the local synagogues. One of the little, little synagogues somewhere in the country of Israel where Jesus was preaching one, one Saturday. And it says in Luke chapter 13, He was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. And behold, there was a woman that had a spirit of infirmity for how many years, somebody? 18 years. years. This is the third time 18 is mentioned. One for the Father because the Father brought the judgment. One for the Son because the Son brought mercy. One for the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost brings the healing and the miracles by the Spirit of God. Paul says to the Galatians, he says, oh, you Galatians, you're starting to try to do the works of the flesh. But did the one that works signs and wonders do it through the works of the flesh or by the Spirit? By the Spirit. Amen. amen. That's a good amen. Hallelujah. By the Spirit. And that's what we've got here. We've got, we've got bondage, servanthood, slavery. Then we've got deliverance through praise and mercy and strength being established. And then we have something take place. A woman bowed over for 18 years. Could not lift herself up in any way. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. He called her. He's calling out to people, come unto me. We need to be the echo of come unto me. And he said to her, woman. You know what that word means really? Mother. Remember when Jesus said to Mary, woman, what hast thou to do with me? It's too bad the translators didn't translate it the way it was meant to be said. It was meant to be said, mother. What has this got to do with me? And Jesus said to this woman, he, called, he gave her a term. He called her with dignity. He said, Mother. You are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight. She became like a pillar. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. And she glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. Because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. And he said to the people, there are six days that men ought to work. In them, therefore, come and be healed. Not on the Sabbath day. And the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrite. He wasn't afraid to call a spade a spade. He wasn't afraid to call a hypocrite a hypocrite, even if the hypocrite was the pastor of the church. Because he knew who he was. And he didn't do it in anger. He was acting in mercy. And he says, Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or ass from the stall and lead them away to get water? He said, you're a hypocrite. You will do work on the Sabbath day to water your oxen and your donkeys. Yes. But here I am bringing the water of life to somebody. And you are calling me, saying I can't do it. Yes. And then he says this. And ought not this woman. In other words, we're saying, and this woman has a right. Being a daughter of Abraham. Being a child of God. 
whom Satan hath bound low these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. Satan had bound her for 18 years. That's the first meaning of 18, bondage, servanthood to a false king, to an evil king. And then mercy comes in and says, just raise your two pillars. When I say lift your hands unto the Lord in just a moment, I want you to lift them up and, and say to yourself, this is Boaz and this is Jacob. And my strength is established in him. Somebody lift your hands and praise God. Lift your Boaz and your Jacob and get your strength established in him. You see, when you lift your hands, you're not just doing what the preacher said. You're giving God glory and you're getting strength and you're being established in him. As a daughter of Abraham. Hallelujah. Ladies, gentlemen, ladies, you are daughters of Abraham. Men, you are sons of God. And you have a right to be healed. You have a right to be delivered from the bondages that you suffer in at home, at work, wherever you may be. You have a right to bring that deliverance to your children because they are under your covering. You have a right to do that. And the way you'll have the ability to do that is because your strength is established in him. Amen. Your Boaz and your Jacob are strong. Yes. Your praise is perfect. And out of your mouth, when you feel incomplete, when you feel insecure, when you feel, I can't do it, I need somebody else to do it. When that happens to you and you begin to praise God and say, Lord, you can use me even though I don't feel it. You can use me, Lord. You can use me. I'm available, Lord Jesus. You can use me. Whatever you want in my life, do it, Lord God. And the Lord says, that's all I'm looking for. You see, talent, God's got it all. Ability, God's got it all. Availability, that's what you've got. When we say to God, I've got the talent, he says, uh, yours doesn't match up to mine. Well, I've got the ability, Lord. Uh, yours doesn't match up to mine. I'm available, Lord. I can use you. He's looking for availability. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So today, you have a revelation about how to move in God. How to move from bondage to mercy, to strength, through praise and deliverance because you have a right to be healed of whatever Satan has bound you with. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so God says right now in our hearts, he says, I want to do the things that I spoke about. I want to bring healings. I want to bring signs and wonders. I want to touch the lives of those who are here. So I want you to come up and line up across the front. I'm going to lay hands on each one of you and pray over you. And ask God's blessing on your life. I may have something special to say for you. I may not. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're just here and you're saying, Lord, I'm available. Use me. And Lord, teach me to praise you. Lord, show me how to praise you more. Lord, teach me, show me, use me. Because I'm available to you.